Dwight making his second appearance of the year. He worked six innings to a no decision his first time out. His earned run average 4.50. In the six innings, he struck out six and gave up six hits. Dwight Gooden, 20 years of age, the youngest pitcher in the National League, and the youngest pitcher to ever start an opening day game in Major League Baseball. And the Reds scoring only one run in the last two games. A little revised lineup by Pete Rose, the playing manager. Eddie Milner, the center fielder, will lead off. Pete Rose batting second, followed by Dave Parker, the right fielder. Cesar Cedeno, the left fielder, will bat fourth. Wayne Krenchicki making his first start. Bothered somewhat this spring by lower back problems. Danny Concepcion, the shortstop, will hit sixth. Ron Oster is looking for his first base hit of the 1985 campaign. He's 0 for 12. He'll bat seventh. Dan Billardella once more behind the plate. And 23-year-old Jay Tibbs, a teammate of that man right there, Dwight Gooden, two years ago for the Class A Lynchburg Ball Club of the New York Mets. Really a great story, isn't it, Ralph? Two young guys like that two years ago, waddling around in the minor league. Well, not waddling around. <laughs> Dwight, after all, was 19 and 4 and struck out 300. They were walking on water down there. That's right. More of the Cincinnati Reds. So we're in action here at Shea Stadium. We have a pretty good breeze blowing, and it's swirling around here, mainly blowing in. And coming up to lead off will be Eddie Milner. Eddie one for two in this series. Got a base hit as a pinch hitter. Eddie, a great start. Last season was hitting 288 when he got hepatitis, and that knocked him down. And he ended up uh, with an average of just 232. Ball by Gooden for a call strike. 1973, the Mets got off to a 4-0 start. Mets have become the first team in Major League history to win four consecutive one-run ball games at the start of a season. Gooden out in front now with a two-strike count. And evidently from that picture you just saw there, the umpires have said the pitchers can blow on their hands while standing in contact with the pitching rubber. And that ball fouled off, so the count stays at strike two. Milner hitting 667 for the season, two for three. First curve ball by Gooden, then he misses with it, one and two. A little hard to throw breaking balls, Tim, in cold weather. That ball does not have much feel to it. Yeah, you have to grip it tightly to get the good rotation on it. That ball really feels very slick on cold days. Fastball, that's foul back. Can't find the seams. And obviously, that's why umpire, home plate umpire, and crew chief, Billy Williams, has allowed the pitchers to blow on their hands. A very frigid day here at Shea. There's another curveball, and they got two balls and two strikes. On deck batter Pete Rose, he's 44 today. And he is off to a good start. Sitting four straight ball games with six base hits. Fastball hit in the air to left field. Foster is right there. So Miller flies out for the first out of the game. Here in the Cincinnati Red lineup, you want to lay off the high fastball for Dwight Gooden. He's one of the few pitchers around that's much more effective up than he is down. And you saw that high fastball at Miller. You just cannot get on top of that ball. Last year at this time, Pete Rose, right on his 43rd birthday, had quite, quite an experience. He got his 4,000th base hit. It was off of Jerry Kuzman. There's a fastball for a call strike. The hit came on the 21st anniversary of his first major league game. He got his first major league hit off of Bob Friend across the field. And it came one day before his 43rd birthday. Starting in the month of April in the 10-day period, Pete got married. His 43rd birthday, got his 1,000th extra base hit and his 3,000th single all about a year ago. Pretty good way to celebrate. Busy week. Fastball foul back. So rolls with a two strike count.
Great curveball. Hitter who has been a hitter can really appreciate the devastating effect of that breaking ball. Rose has been at bat more times than anybody in the history of the game, and that was one of the toughest times he's had, especially against the pitcher as young as Dwight Gooden. Mm -hmm. Now the batter will be Dave Parker, the veteran one for seven in this series, batting 286. Hernandez hit on the ground by Keith Hernandez underneath his glove, and Parker has the first hit of the ball game. I guess they'll score that a base hit, and they do. You're right, Ralph. Keith, a little tentative on a ball like that. Usually, he is not quite that tentative. That ball stayed down on him, and you rarely see Keith Hernandez with that glove up. Usually, when he goes to his left and makes that uh, cross step, he has that glove on the ground. That ball stayed down and in there for a base hit, but that's a ball that Keith usually feels. You get so used to it, you're surprised when he That's right. Feel that's it. exactly right. So the base hit, and now the batter will be Cesar Cedeno. Cedeno hitting 333. He's been about 15 times at five hits. Two for eight in the series. Key to the ball game in yesterday's win for the Mets was the fact that Cedeno was unable to sacrifice two runners over. He then hit into a double play. And it is foul back out of play. Interesting matchup with Parker at first base. Not great speed, but pretty good speed. 14 stars. experiencing technical difficulty with the audio portion of our program. Please stand by. back over to the right side of your body that takes time and that's time that you really don't have when you got a guy who can run as well as Parker and as big as Parker Parker almost took second base out into the outfield with that late slide he he really got into that bag so Parker a native of Cincinnati is on at second base and the count two and one on Cedeno fastball no chance on that one he was a mile behind it zone hit Dwight Gooden you have to make the ball be down in that strike zone Gooden said he was surprised when he came to the major leagues that he could get hitters out on a high fastball he was told that you can't pitch and win in the major leagues with a high fastball whoever told him that was crazy whoever said that's exactly right correct here's the 2-2 pitch and it's hit high in the air and fair actually playable in foul territory and Howard Johnson makes a catch, and the side is retired. So no runs, one hit, one strikeout, one left at second on the stolen base after the base hit, and the score at the end of one half inning, the Reds nothing, the Mets coming up. Now here's a word from Michelob Light. Well, the Reds take the field defensively. They have Pete Rose at first base. Rose, 44 years of age today. At second base, Ron Oster. Shortstop is Dave Concepcion. At third base, Wayne Krenchicki. Out of left field, Cesar Cedeno. Center fielder, Eddie Milner. And in right field, Dave Parker. The catcher, Dan Billardello. And on the mound, Jay Tibbs. Tibbs with a record of 0-1, an earned run average of 4.50. He has worked a total of six innings, giving up seven hits. Jay Tibbs. Former New York Met. And it's popped up in the air. The attempted at drag bump by Wally Backman. So one pitch and one away.
Saw Wally Backman, the leadoff hitter. Mookie Wilson batting second. Keith Hernandez will bat third. Gary Carter in the fourth slot. Right fielder Daryl Strawberry, the hero of yesterday's game, batting fifth. George Foster batting sixth. Howard Johnson, the switch hitting third baseman, batting seventh. And Ron Gardenhire with his first start of the year will hit eighth, followed by Dwight Gooden. And Tibbs with a fastball for ball one. Mookie in this series is two for six. Overall, he's four for 17, batting at 235. Backman was batting 182 before he popped his little bun attempt up. One ball, one strike. And we are experiencing some audio technicalities, so please stand by. We'll try and get it corrected. And on the left field line, it should be a two-base hit. Mookie streaking on to second, and he has a double. Well, that's why all big league hitters must use all parts of the field. If Mookie tries to pull that outside strike, he just plays pepper with the second baseman. Instead, that bat head slapped it down the third baseline, and Mookie has his first double of the year. And the Mets have a runner at second with one out, and Keith Hernandez is the batter. Keith hitting 375. He has six hits and 16 times up, although he's hitless against the Cincinnati Reds. He is 0 for 6 in the two games they have played. And the curveball for ball one. Mookie Wilson turning a real quality pitch by Tibbs into a into a base hit. And your good offensive players will do that, Ralph. Really went with the pitch and hit it right down that left field line. And the result is history. Breaking ball for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Jay Tibbs acquired by Cincinnati. In the deal is sent Bruce Berenny here. And a fastball to strike. See Davey Concepcion down at second talking to Mookie Wilson. Now shrewd <laughs> guys who've been around the game a long time make guys like that, like a good base runner like Wilson, they make them think that they're really interested in their welfare. But actually all he's doing is getting his mind off of his business. This ball popped up into left field. So Daniel, the left fielder, and he makes a catch. So two men away, Mookie holds it second as he has conversation with Ron Oster. <laughs> I can think of almost no conversation traded on an infield when I was on base in 21 years, Ralph, that ever amounted to anything. How's the family? <laughs> How's the family? <laughs> Have a nice winter. How's Where's your automobile place? running? Where's a good place to go eat in this town? Yeah, where are you living? Who cares? Play the game. <laughs> Here's Gary Carter batting for the first time. Two for eight in this series. Carter hit, has hit in every game the Mets have played. And he has two home runs. Two home runs, one in two ball games. One ball, no strikes. Carter with five hits and 17 times up. They play Carter as a pull hitter. And the curveball, a ball. Two balls, no strikes. See, Billy Williams jerked that head up like that. When an umpire does that, he really has an idea about what has happened. The, the pitch has fooled him, and he has an idea about calling that ball a strike. Okay, so you'll see the arm start up, too, uh -huh. and then he'll pull it down. Mm -hmm. The 2-0 pitch. And it's out of the strike zone. Carter fooled by the breaking ball. When Jay Tibbs and Dwight Gooden were together at Lynchburg, the manager coach, John Cumberland, said on Tibbs and Gooden, some, some both could become fair pitchers. He it's a right. master of understatement right That's there. That's right. John Cumberland still in the minor leagues as a pitching instructor for the Mets. And a slider that's in there for a call strike, two and two. Tibbs was with five different teams and in three organizations, beginning with the Phillies in spring training last year. The Phillies had drafted him out of the Mets organization, then they returned him. They decided not to keep him, and then that's how Cincinnati got in the act. They acquired him from the New York Mets. Tibbs was with Jackson, Tidewater, Wichita, and the Reds. 
I don't know how Tibbs and Billardella are going to work him, but with the count 2-0, and oh, they've thrown three straight sliders to Carter. And if I'm Gary, I'm looking for another breaking ball, which means that it's a good time for the popper. Preferably oh. on the inside part. Full count, 3-2. and two. They're shifting outside, so it looks like they're going to the breaking ball. As ball four, that's what they got. So runners now at first and second and two went out, and Daryl Strawberry, whose home run won it in the ninth inning for the Mets yesterday. Daryl four for 11. Catching theory, Ralph, is if you throw the breaking ball behind in the count for a strike, then you planted the seed that you can throw the breaking ball behind in the count for the strike. Therefore, your fastball, you reestablish, and that's what pitching is all about, reestablishing. And it's strike one. As a hitter, you're looking for the different pitches, and when you know that the pitcher is willing and can throw the ball over with a breaking ball when he's behind, it sets up your thinking differently. One strike to count. Ground ball right at Oster. So the Mets threaten but don't score. A double by Mookie Wilson, a walk to Gary Carter, two men left on base, and the score at the end of one inning here at Shea Stadium. Cincinnati Reds nothing, the New York Mets nothing. Now here's a word from the good old guys. Well, we're going to the top of the second inning. No score each side with a base hit. Reds coming up here with Wayne Krenchicki to lead off. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> I wonder how long that took. I mean, the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's a wig. I hope it's not done any other way than that. <laughs> oh, that is great. Grinchicki, the leadoff for the Reds. Wayne starting against the Mets for the first time. Alternates at third base with Nick Asaski. Three years with the Reds. He's batted 302 as a left hand batter. Reds picking him up for Baltimore. And good with a fastball for ball one. We've seen four one-run ball games. The Mets have won all of them. And elsewhere in baseball, a lot of happenings. Huh? How about that Seattle club, 5-0? and oh? Won it on a grand slam home run with two men out in the ninth yesterday. Dwight behind with a count of two balls and no strikes. The Mets are the only undefeated team in the National League. And a ball for ball three. Whole mess of undefeated teams in the American League. Starting with Seattle, and they have a record on top of 5 0. Baltimore, Boston, Detroit all undefeated. They're 4 0. And the Mets, of course, the only undefeated team in the National League. The 3 1 pitch. Ball 4, and Gooden has walked Franchicki, the leadoff batter. When Gooden worked six innings in his first start, he walked two batters. Now has walked his first in this game. One of the amazing things about Gooden last year was his strikeout base on ball ratio. He walked only 73 in 218 innings while striking out, of course, 276 all-time major league record for a rookie. And the batter coming up is Dave Concepcion. Concepcion in this series, one for five. Overall hitting 273. 15-year veteran for the Cincinnati Reds and the fastball by Good. Davey looking down for a hit run possibility from Billy DeMars, the third base coach. Dwight Gooden, of all the guys in the National League, I think is the one guy that you do not want to hit and run against. Too many fly balls hit off of him. There have only been fly balls in the two outs that were made when guys put the ball on the bat or put the bat on the ball in the first inning. And the curveball, the ball. One ball, one strike. Guys you want to hit and run against are the guys who throws the sinkers. A guy like Roger McDowell, who gave up, while giving up two hits yesterday, all outs were recorded on the ground. Matter of fact, all of his nine outs and his two wins have been recorded on the ground. We took a look at Pete Rose. Throw over to first base. Rose, of course, a play manager, so he makes the decisions. Usually a play manager will have a very strong coach that will act basically as a manager, although the main decisions come from the play manager. And this ball is popped up halfway 
for Wayne Krenchecki, and Mookie Wilson makes a catch, and Krenchecki goes back to first. Ralph, we mentioned weird things that happened yesterday in this past week in baseball. How about the Phillies at Houston last night? With Jeff Stone and Juan Samuel on first and second in the first inning, a 3-2 count on Von Hayes, the young pitcher for the right-hander for the Astros, Mathis, picked off Stone at second, and before he threw a pitch to Hayes, picked off Samuel. Hayes walked on the 3-2 count and then was caught stealing at second base. <laughs> Never threw a strike. Nope. Got three outs. Right. There's a the pitch back. Ryan Oster still looking for his first hit. Oster 0 for 6 against the Mets. Overall, he is 0 for 12. Last year, he got one hit in his first 25 at bat, so he's following the same pattern as last year, which is not much fun. Bad pattern. Boy. Got to get like, rid of that one. Like some of my sports coaches. <laughs> A real bad pattern. <laughs> some of your old working partner's sport coach. Oh, Lindsay, Lindsay Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> I think they're still alive. <laughs> one ball, one strike. We used to go around, Tim, and look in the windows on on the avenues, you know, and whenever we see one that you couldn't stand to look worse than any of the others, we tell Lindsay about it, and then he go down and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> one one pitch. He's sort of like Phil Harris. He said, you got to get their attention. When we went to color TV, that's what Lindsay said he'd do. He'd get all those bright colored sport coats, and you'd notice him, and you certainly did. You find an announcer, too. 25 years announcing the Cotton Bowl. All CBS right. did a Nice tribute to Lindsay this year. Fastball foul back. Two balls, two strikes. Lindsay put into the Mets Hall of Fame, announced 17 years here as the Mets broadcaster, starting with Bob Murphy and me back in 1962. Mets lost their first nine games in 62. This year they won their first four. That ties a Mets record. 1973, the Mets won their first four ball games. And it's a strike three call. The batter cannot run at first base with first base occupied and one man out. So the strikeout goes. The runner holds it first and Gooden gets his second strikeout. It's amazing how many hitters think that they can run to first base, but with less than two out and first base occupied, you are out. Naturally, with two out, you can, you can run to first base. If the ball is not caught. Right, right. Now it's Dan Bilodello. Bilodello swings at the fastball, pops it up. It might be playable. Carter back. And it hits the screen. He can't make the play. Well, that's the tough thing. What you're uh, trained to do is to get to the fence first. And Gary had to worry about the screen and the ball, but actually that ball is catchable. You don't think it hit the screen at all coming down? I, I don't think so. Can't tell right from there, but I believe that ball came down clean. So the ball drops. There's no error charge on the play. Could be scored as an error for prolonging the time at bat. Ralph, I, I was going to say, the reason you uh, find the fence is the fence is always going to be there. The backstop's always going to be there. So you find the fence, and then you back off to catch the ball. And the fastball, a call strike. Villadello has had one hit in ten times up so far this year. In this series, Villadello 0 for 3. No score, runner at first base, and a throw to first base. Two men out, we're in the top of the second inning. Good curveball, it's topped out to the shortstop side. Garden hire over to Backman, and that retires the side. So in the inning, no runs, no hits, a walk, a strikeout, and one man left on base. And the score at the end of one and a half innings, the Reds nothing, the Mets nothing. Now, here's a word from Manufacturers Hanover. As premier catcher for pitchers such as Bob Gibson and Steve Carlton, coming in for the play-by-play, -play, Tim McCarver. Thank you very much, Ralph. Bottom of the second inning, no score. George Foster leading off of the Mets, followed by H Howard Johnson and Ron Gardenhauer. Foster off to a good start, batting 333 against his old teammates. 
the Cincinnati Reds, betting 308 overall. He has a home run and an RBI. On the scoreboard, the Cardinals leading Pittsburgh 2 0 in the bottom of the third. Joaquin Andujar against Rick Roden. The Cardinals winless so far this season. 0-4. Victims of two extra inning one run defeats at the hands of the Mets. George Foster's ready and so is 23-year-old Jay Tibbs from Birmingham, Alabama. Base hit up the middle. So Foster continues his Early hot hitting, and it's the leadoff runner here in the second inning. Loves to extend those arms, doesn't he? A little breaking ball that's outside, and this is what he likes. He gets those arms straightened out, hits it off the end of the bat. Not well hit, but certainly well placed. And Foster with a base hit with no one out. And the batter, Howard Johnson. Howard 0 for 7 against the Reds, but what sparkling defense he played yesterday. One of the surprises of Howard Johnson is how adept he is at the, in the field. Strong throwing arm. Fastball misses, 1-0. Oh. Well, he pulled off the key defensive plays, no doubt about it. Turning a fine double play and also making a great play in a Sasky in the fourth inning with no one out and runners at first and second. He picked up a forced play. Key and play in that ball game, by the way. Tap towards second, Ron Oster. And Johnson beats it at first. I think had Oster run Foster back to first base, Ralph, thrown to first, then they may have had Foster in the rundown. But technically, that ball is not hit hard enough for a double play. Right there, he shovels it off backhand to the shortstop, and Concepcion unable to get it to first base in time. Might have been a little, little better chance if he'd have gone at the runner. Howard Johnson runs well. He had 35 stolen bases a couple of years ago for Evansville, Triple-A affiliate of the Tigers. Ron Gardenhire takes a fastball low, 1-0. Gardenhire playing at shortstop in place of Santana. There's nothing wrong with Santana. Davey Johnson just wants to get Gardenhire in a ball game to keep him as sharp as he can. It's a pretty good idea. Got to keep your bench ready. Yes, you do. Somewhere down the line, you're going to need him. Few teams have won with eight or nine players. That's one of the criticisms to the 69 Cubs and Leo DeRocher. Fastball is high, 2-0 to Gardenhire. DeRocher, for the most part, played that season with eight regulars and about four or five pitchers. Didn't have a lot of a, uh, much of a bench to work with, but you got to keep your extra guys ready. Gardenhauer has a good cut, fouls it back in the booth, right next to Mr. Kiner's soda. And it didn't even knock it over. It certainly didn't. Well, the season is official now, the first ball in the broadcast booth. <laughs> and it won't be the last. <laughs> Thankfully, it was on your side. <laughs> Notice how ball I went to my right. <laughs> yes, you did. Fastball misses, so it's 3-1 and one to Gardenhauer. <laughs> that ball landed right there. Right here. Right yeah, there. right here. That was it. All right. 3-1 pitch is high. So Ron Gardenhire is on there. And for the second time in two innings, the Mets have runners at first and second and only one out. First time Gardenhire has reached base this year. And the batter, Dwight Gooden. Mike chipped in with a base hit in his first ball game, but as Kurt Simmons, a great pitcher in his own right for the Phillies and the Cardinals, used to say, it's not base hits a pitcher worries about, it's at bats. <laughs> get to get those four at bats in the ball game, you're still in it. That means you've gone seven to nine innings. Goodness gonna bunt, and it's a beauty. Tibbs will have to go to first. Good runs well, safe at first base. Boy, what a good job by Gooden. Woo! He can fly now. Right here, Gooden is legging it out full speed right from the bunt. And he beats the throw to first base on his hustle. And that could open up the inning right there. 
Oh, what a good job the White does here. The bunt is out there. Not really uh, a great bunt for a base hit. It's a good sacrifice bunt, but just on his speed alone, good and beats the throw to first base. So he had hustled the play, and the Mets had the bases loaded. The White good. And it's got to go as a base hit. It was fielded cleanly by Tibbs. A late throw to first, and the Mets have the bases loaded and one out. Wally Backman, the batter. You know, it didn't look like Tibbs was that deliberate in this throw. You just got to credit Gooden with busting it all the way, 90 feet. And he surprised, I'm sure he surprised Jay Tibbs that he was running that fast and that hard. Fastball is outside to Backman. Infield and in double play depth. Grinchicki, the third baseman, is in in case Backman taps one. Grinchicki will probably go home. There you see the infield alignment. Rose naturally off and in at first base. Line drive could be two. Oster, Concepcion, and they turn it. A big double play gets Jay Tibbs and the Reds out of trouble here in the second. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two left. At the end of two innings of play, still no score. Now here's the word from Michelob Light. Top of the third inning of a scoreless ball game, Dwight Gooden against Jay Tibbs. The Reds with one hit. Single by Dave Parker with two out and nobody on in the first inning. And the Mets with a splendid opportunity to play to run in the second. But a double play ball hit by Wally Backman. He hit it sharply, but right at Oster at second, and they turned it nicely. Here's Jay Tibbs. Jay 0 for 1. We mentioned Tibbs is from Birmingham, Alabama. He went to school with Britt Burns, the left-hander of the Chicago White Sox, and also with Bill Latham, the left-hander with the New York Mets, who will get his first Major League start tomorrow night. Fastball is high. Burns and Latham were both seniors at Huffman High School in Birmingham when Jay Tibbs was a sophomore. Ball two, 2-0. Two oh. I don't hear of many pitching staffs in high school with three fellows from reaching the Major League. Three big leaguers. There's a strike. Two and one to Jay Tibbs. Gooden, on the other hand, went to Hillsboro High in Tampa. Pass ball is high, three and one. White has two strikeouts and one base on balls yielded so far. Swing and a miss, and maybe ball four. A little help right there. A little help from my friends, huh? <laughs> Jay Tibbs is certainly that. Strike three, he got him. Fastball on the outside corner. Third strikeout for Dwight Gooden. Well, so far, Gooden has averaged a strikeout an inning. Here's the last pitch. It's a borderline strike. It's a call from Billy Williams. Gooden had 276 strikeouts and 218 innings pitched last year. Struck out 300 and 191 innings a couple of years ago at Lynchburg. Eddie Milner the better. Oh, what a yellow hammer that was. Strike one. Another curveball, one hopper to Gooden. Two out. Easy play for the right good news, an outstanding athlete. Dwight was only the fourth pitcher in Major League history to pitch more than 200 innings in a season at the age of 19. Feller, Wally Bunker, and Gary Nolan also pitched 200 innings at the age of 19 in the Major League. And the batter's going to be Pete Rose after Howard Johnson clears some debris that was just thrown onto the field. We mentioned Bill Latham getting his first major league start tomorrow night. Also, Mike Balecki, the young right-hander from Pittsburgh, getting his first start as the Mets travel to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Ron Darling and Jose De Leon will go on Tuesday, and Bruce Perini and Larry McWilliams wind up the three-game series on Wednesday night. 
Breaking ball. Base hit for Pete Rose. Base hit number 4,104. Hmm. And Pete Rose was struck out on the curveball his last time up. He got a curveball on the first pitch, and the veteran was looking for it. He singled the right field. To put things in perspective, Ralph, I was thinking about this last night. Now, you're a Hall of Famer, played 10 years, 368 home runs, and over 1,400 hits. I am not a Hall of Famer, nor will I be in the Hall of Fame, but I had 1,502 hits. So that means that Pete Rose has 1,200 hits more than you and me, okay? And we played a total, a combined total of 30 years in the major leagues. That Here's Parker. Proves he's got an awful lot of hits. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> That, that's a ton of hits, and I'm sure other analogies and comparisons can be drawn. Gooden got a piece of that, and Backman goes to second. Score that one to four, as Dwight Gooden did get a piece of that ball hit well by Parker. The Reds get a hit, and they strand one in the third, and after two and a half, there's no score. Now, here's a word from American Express. Fans, the best way to follow the Mets this season is with a 1985 official yearbook. This year's edition has been expanded to 112 pages and contains a special 16-page feature on National League Championship Baseball in New York. The book is full color with full-page photos of 10 of your favorite Mets, always a collector's item. The book contains bios and stats of all the Mets and includes a three-page feature on Dwight Gooden. To purchase the Mets yearbook by mail, please send a check or money order for $5 payable to the Mets to Promotion Graphics, Department M, as in money, <laughs> 160 Varick Street, New York, New York, 10013. That's a check or money order for $5 payable to the Mets, Promotion Graphics, Department M, 160 Varick Street, New York. Or M as in Mookie. As in Mookie, who's leading it off here in the third inning of a scoreless ball game. Mookie doubled to left his first time up. Swing and a miss at a good sinker from Tibbs. Mookie with that choker on around his neck. It is cold here at Shea today. About 45 degrees. Whistling wind whipping in from center field. Jams him with a fastball. Concepcion back, waving off Cedeno. One out. Whenever you see a shortstop or a second baseman go back into left center or right center, respectively, and they put that hand up, that is warding off the outfielders, saying, I got it. You can yell all you want to sometimes, and the left fielder, right fielder can't hear you. Ralph, you'd know more about that than I would. No question about it. I always marveled at Buddy Harrelson when he'd go back in the shallow left field with some bullet playing left. Keith Hernandez grounds the first pitch to Pete Rose, who goes to first. So two quick outs for the Mets here. Buddy Harrelson was as good as anybody going back on a pop fly. He could hear Sabota coming, but he was never sure whether he's going to stop or not. <laughs> Like standing at a freight train Ooh. crossing. Don't want to do that. Gary Carter walked his first time up. And the loquacious Carter is always chatting with home plate umpire Billy Williams. You'd think they talk enough. I mean, he's on defense nine innings. Gary can talk. And he, and he speaks very well, I might add. He's got a lot to say. Finished in the top 50 of his class. In high school, he's originally from Culver City, California. What a talent. Culver City years ago was known as a movie center. They used to have studios there. No longer do they make those movies in Culver City. 23-year-old Jay Tibbs is ready. Very poised young man. Face hit left field. Well, Gary Carter has the fourth hit of the game for the Mets. And the batter, Daryl Strawberry. Well, Carter's been on base twice now with a walk and a base hit, and that base hit gives him a base hit in every game the Mets have played. Two of his RBIs, the only two he has, came on home runs, and both 
game-winning RBI. Strawberry, four for nine against Cincinnati. Had six home runs and 14 RBIs against the Reds last year. Started off the first game of home run against Mario Soto. They only run the Mets scored, and they lost eight to one. Taps this one foul. 0-1 oh on the straw man. One of those home runs against Jay Tibbs last July 30th. Great set of eyes, huh? Concentration, competitive. Fell a lot in the eyes, Ralph. Good fastball on the corner, 0-2. Oh Surely can. Oh, that's a great shot. Fastball is low, one and two to Daryl Strawberry. I like that little peek over to first base. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Tibbs had second thoughts about that pitch selection. You see Billardello waving it off, and they'll go through the signs again. There we go. Okay, Jay. Another fastball misses, so it's two and two to Daryl Strawberry. In the game yesterday, Mookie Wilson let off the eighth inning with a base hit and was sacrificed his second. Keith Hernandez was the next batter, and he walked. If he had not walked, Carter would have been walked intentionally. As it turned out, Hernandez walked. Carter hit into a double play. Strike three, fastball on the outside corner as Daryl Strawberry is called out on strikes. First strikeout for Jay Tibbs. For the Mets in the third, they got a hit and they stranded Carter. They've now stranded five through three of a scoreless ball game. Now here's a word from Nissan. Top of the fourth, the Reds coming up and coming in for the play-by-play, -play, Steve Sabrisky. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Good afternoon, everybody. Scoreless ball game. Two hits for the Reds, four hits for the Mets. And here is Cesar Cedeno, who is 0 for 1. Cedeno popped out to third baseman Howard Johnson in foul territory to end the first inning. Got to be tough on the hitters on a day like today, Ralph. It's tough on everybody, including the announcer. <laughs> you got that right. I'm freezing. I see you got your gloves on. Yeah. I can't handle the cold weather very well. Where were you when the foul ball came came up here? I was uh, down by the camera. You got the, you got two two gloves on, and you should have been here. That's right. I was, or at least they should have hit it toward me. One and one to Cedeno. Dwight Gooden has struck out three through the first three and walked one. Not an easy day for the doctor either. He prefers the warmer weather. In fact, in his first two starts this year, he has taken about 10 to 15 minutes extra warm-up before the game. Beautiful breaking pitch as he took something off and had Sedania way out in front. Last year, Gooden didn't throw any change-ups. He just went fastball, curveball. Right here, he pulls the string. Sedania way out in front. No wonder he didn't fall down. One and two. Boy, I don't know. That was mighty close. Pitch was every bit as close as the one Strawberry was called out on. We'll see you, if he went. You be the umpire. Pretty close to take. Two and two. Big curveball. See you later. Strikeout number four. And one out here in the fourth inning. Same pitch that Gooden threw to Pete Rose to strike him out in the first inning. So Gooden now rolling along on a one strikeout per inning pace as he gets the curveball over after that fastball and gets a strikeout. So All four of Dwight's strikeouts have been called strikes. Krenchicki fouls the first pitch back for strike one. Wayne Krenchicki walked his first time up to lead off the second inning and then was erased on a force play. He did not play in the first two games of this series. In there today, basically because he hits left-handed. Curveball fouled off. It's 0-2. With the Reds, he's batted 3-0-2 as a left-hand batter. 
He's bounced around a bit. He was in the minor leagues a little bit last year, too. Doesn't hurt so much to go to the minors nowadays because you tear, you carry that big salary down there with you. That's right. <laughs> there are a few things that are different, however. Two strikes to count. Two high. One and two. Grinchicki and Isaski have been battling for the third base job. They did all through spring, and Isaski more or less emerged as Pete Rowe's favorite. There's the K corner. Right back to good, and he caught it. Dwight in self-defense flagged that one down, and there are two away. Here it is again. The bat is broken on the pitch, so the ball isn't hit as hard as you might think it is. And Dwight gets the glove up as he tracks it down. When those little broken bat jobs come back, you think they're hit much harder than they are, and you throw the glove up, and sometimes it doesn't get there, and you peek around, and that's when you get it in the face. Mm. That one would have drilled him right in the chest, it looked like. Dave Concepcion flying out to Mookie Wilson in right center field his first time up. Batting here with two out, nobody on. Top of the fourth, no score. Raking ball fouled off of home plate for strike one. 15-year veteran, Dave Concepcion. It's a long time to play shortstop for one ball club in the major leagues. Has a lifetime average of 268. Fastball for strike two, 0 and 2. When you think of some clubs don't have a shortstop period, this guy's been there 15 years. <laughs> That's right. Some teams are still looking for one. And the Reds may be looking for one. One and two. Prior to the fourth, in the second and the third inning, Dwight had fallen behind the hitters a little bit. In the first inning, he was ahead of them. And now here in the fourth, he's back to that pattern of getting ahead early. Strike three and five in four innings for Gooden on K-Day here at Shea, appropriately named. A one, two, three inning for Gooden in the fourth. No score in the middle of the fourth inning here at Shea. Now, here's a word from Mita. George Foster will lead it off for New York as we go to the bottom of the fourth, bundled up against the frigid weather here at Shea this afternoon. I think we're in Candlestick Park. Boy, I'll tell you. Of course, it could be like this in June in Candlestick. Foster with a base hit. Back in the second inning, single to center. George in the series is three for seven. And then a ball up and away from Jay Tibbs. The Mets have hit only 219 as a team through the first four games. Of course, the pitching has been the big story. Number one in the National League in ERA so far. Ball two to George. Well, the Mets have won three of their four games with home runs. And they have won another on a walk with the bases loaded. Fouled away, strike one. You know, Steve, to put everything in perspective and to make our caller happy to call from Culver City in California, wasting that money on a long distance phone call, they do make an occasional movie in Culver City now. <laughs> That's the advantage of satellite television. That's right. Well, that shows you that they have pride in their hometown in Culver City, a suburb of Los Angeles, and a beautiful place. Strike two, two and two to George. When I was a kid, we used to go through Culver City on the way to Venice Beach, go down to the beach. That's right, it's between downtown L.A. and the Pacific Ocean. Two and two to Foster, leading off the fourth in a scoreless ball game. And he goes after the high heater and doesn't get it. Tibbs picks up his second strikeout. They have been in a row. Both of them have been fastballs. Strawberry struck out on the fastball. Now Foster going for a pitch out of the strike zone. Here's Howard Johnson. Johnson reached on a fielder's choice back in the second. Was stranded at third when the Mets had the bases loaded. But Backman hit into an inning inning double play. And a ball too low. One and all. And they get the wave going by the bay. Anything to stay warm. Ball two. 
Johnson has really paid some dividends in the field. As he's made some big plays already in the first four games. Popped up into short center field. Milner over and in and the inning. Now with two out and nobody on in the fourth. Tibbs has done a fine job today so far. He has risen to the occasion of battling his former teammate. And here's Ron Gardenhire. Gardenhire walked to load the bases in the second. And he takes a strike. Looks like the Cubs were rained out at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Sutcliffe was scheduled to be the pitcher for the Cubs. Ground ball right back to Tibbs. And it'll be an easy one, two, three inning for Jay as he retires the Mets in order here in the fourth. So the pitchers are in command on this blustery day. No score through four. We'll be back after this word from the good old skies. Well, we invite you to spend two hours with the most beautiful and talented women in America as Pat Boone hosts the American Beauty Search Monday night at 9, right here on Channel 9. Well, Ron Oster is good looking, but he doesn't fit into that category as he leads off here in the top of the fifth. No score and a big curveball from good and called high by home plate umpire Billy Williams. And yeah, this is a beauty of a ball game, a pitcher's duel. Well, we've had a few, haven't we? Been that kind of season so far. Fastball jams him and he fouls it off the other way. One more. Well, a happy birthday is in order today to the daughter of Mets general manager Frank Cashin, Blaze Cashin, celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, Blaze. Too high, two and one. Garden higher one away. Dwight now has retired five in a row. Here's catcher Dan Billardello. Billardello hit into an inning ending force play in the second. 0 for 1, 0 for 4 in the series. Breaking ball in the dirt. 1 and 0. Bill Ardello hit his first major league home run off Tom Seaver. Good way to break in. Unfortunately, he hadn't hit many since then. <laughs> well, at least he has one to remember. One and one. The Dan spells his name with two N's. D-A-N-N. Curveball looped into center field. Mookie coming hard won't be able to get there. Didn't hit it off a good part of the bat. But got a base hit out of it nonetheless. A little blooper right here. He gets jammed. And it's very hard to get jams on, on a curveball. Ball's breaking away from a right-hand batter, but he's still moved in too far on it. It drops in for a base hit, so Philadelphia. Philo Dello gets his first hit in this series. And the third hit of the day off Dwight Gooden for Cincinnati. And here's pitcher Jay Tibbs. One away and a bunting situation. See if manager Pete Rose elects to move the runner over. Gooden's got to be hard to bunt because he has a good hard fastball, the toughest pitch to bunt. And he bunted it hard but foul. Strike one. Especially that fastball up. Around. Hard to get the ball down on the ground when it's up around your letters. Very tough. Gooden has a fastball that's a riding fastball. In spite of the physicists, the ball <laughs> does rise. <laughs> now he's swinging away and fouls it away for strike two. So the doctor... We'll get back to work. These two guys are really a study in concentration today. Gooden has always had those eyes. 
They talk about those eyes even back when he was in high school. With two strikes, he had squared around a bunt, but held back one and two. They had some film on the magic board out in left center field of Bob Feller throwing an opening day no hitter, and it showed some of his pitches. And Feller's curveball just exactly like Gooden's hard, fast breaking curve. Feller, the only man to ever pitch a no hitter on opening day, and that leads to the trivia question what team? Started the season with the same batting average, started the game with the same batting average, and ended the game with the same batting average. Only happened once in the history of baseball, and that was on a no-hitter by Feller. Tibbs is out trying to punt on the third strike, fouled. So a strikeout for Gooden to give him six on the afternoon. And two away with Pilardello still at first base. I'll bet you it's the team that he pitched the no-hitter. Yeah, game. they all started at 0, zero, zero and after the game, they were all hitting 0, zero, zero. Never happened in any other game. And it won't happen again until someone else pitches a no-hitter on opening day. Eddie Milner, the leadoff hitter, is 0 for 2. Milner in the lineup in center field for rookie Eric Davis because he is a left-handed hitter, basically. Pete Rose trying to get as many left-handers in the lineup as you see Pete on deck against Dwight Gooden as possible. Milner has flied to left and tapped back to the pitcher. Fastball on the inside part of the plate, one and one. Gooden last year was one and zero oh with a 1.80 ERA against Cincinnati. And the fastball hit the other way. Howard Johnson takes it, and the inning is over. So a single and one left here in the fifth for Cincinnati. As we'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning, still in a scoreless duel between Gooden and Tibbs, right after this word from Michelob Light. Be sure to catch the rising stars as the New York Mets take on arch rivals, the Philadelphia Phillies, live from Veteran Stadium. Watch them shine Friday night at 8 o'clock right here on Channel 9. That is our next telecast here on WOR. And as Dwight Gooden leads off the fifth inning in this scoreless affair, back into the play-by-play, -play, here's Ralph Kiner. Okay, Steve Sabrisky and Dwight Gooden to lead off for the Mets. Dwight with a bunt base hit to load the bases in the second, but the Mets couldn't get a run in as, Mook, as Wally Backman hit into a double play in the second and the inning. Gooden with his great hustle getting that bunt out on a sacrifice attempt. And this one back to the second baseman, Ulster. He gets a Hollywood hop, speaking of Culver City. <laughs> and one away. Incidentally, that feller no-hitter was pitched on April 16, 1940, against Detroit when he had the no-hit and run game on opening day. Jack Morris and Ken Force both pitched no-hitters at an earlier date, but it was not on opening day. Dwight Gooden, Ralph, incidentally, now is the major league leader, or the national league leader, at least, in strikeouts so far this season with six in this game. He has 12 on the year, and Eric Shaw of San Diego has 11. And Dwight back on top. He led the major leagues in strikeouts last year with 276. First pitch to Backman of all. Wally 0 for 2. And ball two on the mound, Jay Tibbs. There you take a look at the bullpen area and back of right field and also the stairways to the stars. <laughs> That's right, you can take that train down, right down to Broad. See the stars. Two and oh, the count. And now three and oh. As long as we're talking about no hitters, the youngest player to ever pitch a no hitter was 20 years old in six months. That was John Lush for the Philadelphia Phillies in 1906. So Dwight Gooden a chance to become the youngest to ever pitch a no hitter someday, hopefully. Still has a long way to go. His birthday is not until sometime in November. And Bobby Backman walks, second walk given up by Jay Tibbs, and the Mets have a runner on with one out and Mookie Wilson the batter. 
And you might look for the hit and run here if Backman is not running on a straight steal. David Johnson likes to do it with these two guys. And the Mets running game has been extremely successful so far this year. They've been successful eight out of nine attempts in stolen bases so far. Mookie Wilson leads the club with four out of five stolen bases. And he is now the batter with Backman looking for his first on the first. And his ball one. Mookie checking out the signs. Backman had 32 stolen bases last year. That's about hit the Reds four to three. Still no score. And Backman is back. Milner puts it away and Backman back. Two men away. And it brings up Keith Hernandez who's looking for his first hit against the Cincinnati Reds. Keith is 0 for 8 in this series. Still batting 333 for the year. 6 for 18. Had three hits in his first two ball games. In each of his first two ball games. And as we mentioned in the opening game of this series, Keith last year really struggled against the Reds as well. The only team in the National League that really held him down at the plate was the Cincinnati Reds. Two in away, we're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. No score. And the fastball for a ball. This is the last game of this homestand. Let's go on a road trip that takes them to Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and St. Louis. A little action at first base. Keith, of course, hit 311 last year to lead the Mets, but he hit only 188 against the Reds in 84. Two balls, no strikes. Hernandez with 15 home runs last year, 94 RBIs. There goes the runner, and the ball bounced down to Pete Rose, and that should do it. It does. No runs, a walk. One man left on base. The score at the end of five here at Shea. It's the Reds nothing and the Mets nothing. Now, here's a word from Budweiser. We're going now to the top of the sixth. No score in the game. Both sides being held by strong pitching. And as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it's Pete Rose's 44th birthday. And Pete got a very, very unique and beautiful gift from Jerry Halford, the well-known collector who has probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of baseball memorabilia. Jerry Halford presented Pete today with a bronze bust of Ty Cobb for his 44th birthday. Of course, Rose in pursuit of Cobb's base hit record. But you talk about a tough thing to take home with you. It ain't gonna fit in a suitcase, I'll tell you. And it weighs a ton. They're gonna have to give it a seat on the plane going home tonight. But what a nice gift. Well, Rose, a ticket to the Hall of Fame, no doubt about it. Ty Cobb, the first to be elected in the Hall of Fame. Went in with Babe Ruth and Hannes Wagner. Cobb with a lifetime batting average of 367, 4,191 hits. Rose needs 88 to time, 89 to go ahead of him. And Rose fouls off the fastball. One ball, one strike. Cobb's best season average was 420, the all-time high. Rogers Hornsby at 424. The year that Rogers Hornsby hit 424, he wasn't even the most valuable player. Dazzy Vance of the Brooklyn Dodgers was voted that on. Cobb in his last year in 1928 played for the Philadelphia Athletics. He played in 95 games. 
They appeal, no swing, says third base umpire Randy Marsh. Cobb in his last year had 109 hits, batted 323. And he started in 82 of the A's first 86 ball games. Then he got hurt. And the fastball is missed. In Cobb's last 67 games that year, in 1928, his last year, he had only 22 at bats. And his last hit was a double on Labor Day, September 3rd. That was 4,191. And Rose pops it up. Mookie Wilson makes the catch, one away. If you can le read lips, it was a very interesting shot of Pete Rose, as he said, I think he said, that was some ball on the strike previous. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets and WRTV and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of audiences. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and WRTV is prohibited. Now the batter, Dave Parker, who has one of the three hits given up by Gooden. Her ball for ball one. Well, our resident lip reader, Tim McCarver, informs me that he thought Pete said, how did I miss that ball? He missed it because it was thrown about 92 miles an hour. And there's one that is foul tipped. Exactly the same reason that Parker missed that one. Let's take a look at Gary Carter behind the plate. What? You know, when you said missed, he actually hit it, but you meant, yeah. and we all know, no contest. he missed getting a base hit. Baseball language, that's what ball players mean when they say they missed it, even though they might have hit it. Two and one to count. Three and one. You got a glimpse earlier there of Carter checking out Parker. Dave's still a fine hitter. And Carter peeking up to be sure that Parker's not peeking down. It's peekaboo. Fouled back at three and two. Fastball by Dwight Gooden. Gooden struck out one batter in each of his first three innings, then two in the fourth, and picked up another single strikeout in the fifth. Three and two, the batter, Dave Parker. Went to the curveball and walked him. Second walk given up by Gooden. Puts a runner on with one man out and brings up Cedeno. I don't know if I agree with the pitch selection there, Ralph. I'm with you, but at the same time, Gooden is such a good control pitcher for a hard throwing pitcher that he can get that curve over three and two and Parker of course probably and I would have been too sitting on a fastball well, that's spot. true and Parker is a free swinger to take the point one far one bit farther Parker chase back Parker had a stolen base in the first inning his first of the year Now, if I'm hitting and Gooden throws me a curveball three and two, I'm not going to be looking at it. This ball hit out to left field. Foster back near the edge of the warning track. He makes a catch for the second out of the inning, and Parker back to first. Daniel almost got that one. You talk about sitting on a fastball. He was. Got to bring up Wayne Krenchicki who has walked and lined out. Soft line drive right back to Gooden. St. Louis to Pittsburgh, nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Fastball with strike. And the Atlanta Bra Braves, the leaders of the National League West, are leading San Diego three to nothing in the top of the fifth. Bruce Suter already paying large dividends. Almost threw it away. Well, yesterday, both franchises were in operation for the Braves. It was Suter that came in, and let's look at this play, how close it was. The ball was right there. I think he was out. Yeah, it looked like he was out. The ball was caught on Parker's chest before he stepped on the bag. 
blooped foul. But not only did Suter come in in that extra inning affair with San Diego and Atlanta yesterday, but it was Dale Murphy who hit the big game winning home run. Franchicki starting at third base for the first time against the Mets in this series. There is the story of the strikeouts. We're in the sixth inning. Gooden struck out six and six innings his first time out. Left the ball game. Did not get a winner or a loss. Go to first base. Gooden certainly has improved his pickoff move since last year. This is another close play. Parker with a good lead, but he's tall, and he dove back and got his hand on the bag just in time. Two strikes a count, another throw to first, and believe me, Gooden's going to stop a few this year. That move is twice as good as he had last year, if not better. hundred times as good. He only threw out one batter attempting to steal last year when he was on the mound. Out to center field. Mookie from a shallow center field position goes back. And retires the side. No strikeouts in the inning. A walk and one left. And the score at the end of five and a half. The Reds nothing. The Mets nothing. Now here's a word from TWA. We're going to the bottom of the sixth. No score. The Mets about hit the Reds four to three. And for the Mets it'll be Gary Carter to lead off. Gary has been on base twice. He walked in the 3-2 pitch in the first inning. Single to left field in the third. And Gary has hit safely in all five ball games so far this year. It'll be Carter, Strawberry, and Foster for the Mets here in the sixth. Mets have left six men on base, and the Reds have turned one double play. So they've had base runners. Reds have left five men on base. You know, Ralph, if there's one glaring negative stat other than the low team batting average for the Mets so far that may come back to haunt them, it's the fact that they have now left 40 men on base so far this year. They left 34 on base through the first four games. Well, the good news is they've been getting men on. That's true. And the pitching's been good enough to where they haven't had to score that many of them. One thing about home runs, you don't have to have men on base to score a run. <laughs> Mets have used that home run ball to win three of their four games and actually have really had some fine clutch hitting. Yes, they have. And it's interesting with all those men left on base that those home runs have been solo shots. And a good breaking ball by Jay Tibbs, who's done a fine job against the Mets. Count of two and two on Gary Carter. Tibbs came into this game with a record of 0-1. Last year, he was 6-2. Fastball hit foul. Boy, Gary can turn on that fastball, especially with the stance he's got. Open stance, the most... Unusual open stance of any hitter I ever saw was Archie Vaughn, one of the greatest shortstops of all time. And a great hitting shortstop. Once led the leg at 388, I believe. Very open stance. The thing that makes, too. Excuse me, Rob. The thing that makes Carter so impressive with that open stance is the way in which he can handle the ball down and away. As with his big game-winning home run on opening day, a pitch down and away. He pulled that ball into the left field bullpen. And a drive out to left field. Going into the corner of Cedeno. He makes the play. Cesar Cedeno with a great catch. Did he catch it? No, it's out of the ballpark. Cedeno unable to get it. And Carter with another home run. And the Mets take the lead one to nothing. turns one around again. Three home runs. Three RBIs. 
They've all come in tight ball games. As Cedeno gave it a great try, but it's right down the line. Cedeno goes right into the corner against the fence and jumps as high as he can. But it's right over the 338 sign. As Carter comes out for yet another curtain call, we'll take one more look at it. This is not a day when the ball is going to carry well, and Carter got it right down the line and just barely out of here. And yet again, it could be the difference in the ball game. One to nothing, New York. So Carter turning on that fastball and pulling it right into the corner. And the Mets lead one nothing. And now the batter will be Daryl Strawberry, homer to win yesterday's ball game. And it's strike one. Daryl has grounded out and was called out on strikes in his two appearances today. Good curve. Fastball and let's take a look at that home run again. Look at the base of the fence. So Daniel, when as he comes down, the board comes loose from the bottom of the fence. And a pitch for a ball. Two balls, two strikes. You know, if that board was nailed up there, it's a good thing he didn't come down on the nail on his knees, because he did come down on his knees right on that board. And a full count now. Three balls and two strikes. did foul the curveball that was out of the strike zone. So Tibbs going to the breaking ball in the 3-2 pitch. Strawberry able to stay alive on the foul ball. Carter now has driven in three runs on just three swings. It's the way to do it. It's the way you used to do it. Mm -hmm. They can talk about those singles hitters, bro, or those home run hitters. Put up that one run quick on one swing. They don't have to have a bunch of those singles. Now there are two things that people love to see when they come to the ballpark. Strikeouts by a strikeout pitcher and home runs. And we got that combination going today in Dwight Gooden and now Gary Carter. foul ball so the cat stays at three and two Mets have had five home runs and they have played five games ball four strawberry walks no one out That's the fourth walk that Jay Tibbs has issued in the ball game. And it brings up George Foster. Foster has singled and struck out. Conference at the mound. Pete Rose, the manager, isn't in it. He's over at first base. That's it's a little unusual, isn't it, to have an infield conference and your manager's already on the field, but he doesn't participate. Joe Price throwing in the bullpen now for Cincinnati. Tim McCarver just pointed out, and correctly so, that Rose really only has two trips to the mound allowed, even though he's... A player, he's still the manager. Of course, you know there's a way to get around that, Ralph. Just yell. That's right. As a first <laughs> baseman, you can walk by there, you know, say something to him just about any time. Rose, a playing manager, rather a unique thing as you look at him in first base today, anyway. 
Back in 1934, there were nine playing managers in the major leagues. And in the World Series that year, two playing managers. Mickey Cochran of Detroit. Frankie Frisch of the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a strike call. In the World Series of 1933, there were two playing managers. Joe Cronin of the Washington Senators and Bill Terry of the New York Giants. Last playing manager to win a championship, Lou Boudreau in 1948 for the Cleveland Indians. Strawberry at first could be running. Darrell has two stolen bases so far. Darrell stole second and third in one inning against the Reds earlier. One and one as Jay Tibbs works to George Foster. There goes Strawberry, but the ball is foul off. Darrell Strawberry, like Mookie Wilson and other players with speed, can get going quickly. Darrell with those long strides, and really, by the time his foot hits the ground the second time, he's going full speed. And a pitch out, but nothing on. Two and two. You saw Strawberry take a look as he go as he was going down the second. You have to look with that batter up there to find out whether the ball is hit and where it's hit. Can't run blind. Curveball popped up. So Daniel makes the play and Strawberry back to first. Now with one away and Strawberry on at first and Howard Johnson about her, you can pretty well bet that Strawberry will be running if he's given a chance. Paid attendance here today, 30,456. Total in the house, 31,555. And had the weather been better, you'd have to believe it was good and going on K-Day. There'd be more folks here. About 85 to 90,000 seeing this three-game series. There's a drive into the corner. Strawberry can right score, but it's foul. Strawberry running with a pitch, but the ball is foul. So Johnson looking for his first hit in this series. He's 0 for 9 and almost pulling it off there. Flirting with an extra base hit. Johnson runs well enough to have gotten to second base quite easily. Well, I could use a hot dog just to hold in my hands. <laughs> I wouldn't eat it. I would just hold it. Well, there have been hot dogs in the broadcast booth before. <laughs> More ways than one. Is that the hand out the Willie Montanez Award? <laughs> Strawberry back. Mets leading 1 0 on Carter's home run. Carter leading off the inning with the home run. One man out. We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And a strike call. Strike two. Johnson is one for 16 this year. Oh, for 34, the worst batting slump any mid ever had. Don Zimmer in 1962 and Tommy Age, I believe it was 1970. Might have been 68. Inside. That appears to be where they want to work, Johnson. He really questioned that second strike, the first called strike two pitches ago. Worst 
worst batting slump for a season was Bob Buell, who, who went 0 for the season. 0 for 72. <laughs> That's brutal. A pitcher. 1-2 pitch, strawberry running, and again the ball foul. Strawberry on at first base with one man out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Mets leading one nothing. And a count of one and two on Howard Johnson acquired from Detroit. Acquired for Walt Terrell. And it's it high in the air in foul territory. Pete Rose is over to get it. Two men away. So Johnson's slump continues. Brings up Ron Gardenhire, who is 0 for 1. Gardenhire is a new father. That's why Carol gave birth near the end of spring training to their second child, a little girl. In Wichita. And a pitch at Strawberry running. A throw too high into center field. Strawberry up for third. And he goes into third base on the throwing error by Bill Adell. Well, a good throw would have had Darrell because he did not get a good jump. In fact, he looked like he hesitated a little bit, but Bill Ardello, even though he pitched out, just horsed that ball right into center field. He just muscled up on it, it looked like. Darrell was able to pop up and go on to third, so it's a stolen base for Strawberry, his third of the year. A throwing error on Bill Ardello, the first error of the ball game, allows him to go to third. One ball, no strikes to count. And a drive into center field, a base hit. Ron Gardenhar drives in Strawberry. The Mets lead two to nothing. Ron Gardenhar's first hit of the year, and a big one it is, as it gives the Mets two-run lead, and boy, how much nicer that is than a one-run lead when you get to those late innings. Boy, when you make mistakes like that, they can really cost you. A pitch out to had Strawberry dead to rights, and the catcher throws the ball away. Sets up the Met run. They have one in instead of being out of the field defensively, and now the pitch to Dwight Gooden is low for ball one. And another important factor for the Mets is that Dwight gets to bat here in the inning with two out, and it clears the pitcher for the next inning, if nothing else. And his foul back out of play. One ball, one strike. Scoring rules state that you have to give a stolen base, even though a good throw would have thrown the runner out. There you see Willis and Price. Willis was in yesterday's ball game. Carl Willis, that is, a newcomer, and... Jay Tibbs comes up with that one, throws to first base to retire the side. Two runs in the inning on two base hits. There was one error and one man left on base. And the score at the end of six, the Mets two and the Cincinnati Reds nothing. Now here's a word from Budweiser. with Pappy Boyington and his squadron of flying misfits. Yes, Robert Conrad stars in Black Sheep Squadron today at 5 right here on Channel 9. And we're hoping this game will be over in time for you to see those guys. And we will not have another extra inning affair. The Mets have a leg up on that. Two to nothing on Carter's home run and Garden Hire's RBI single as we go to the seventh. Coming back for the play-by-play, -play, here's Tim McCarver. All right, Steve, the Mets are acting like flying tigers instead of black sheep squadron. They are flying high with a two-run lead in this game. Four straight victories, all by a one-run margin. And Davey Concepcion is up. He's 0 for 2, takes a fastball high from Dwight Gooden. 21 hits for 2,000. Well, he'll get that this year. He stays healthy. Another fastball is high. 
So it's 2-0 to Dave Concepcion. Ron Oster on deck. Joe Price, the left-hander, continues to twirl in the bullpen for the red legs. Needless to say, if the Mets hold on and win this ball game, it'll be their best start ever in the history of the club. There's a strike, two and one. Of course, the Tigers set the pace last year, winning first nine games, and then 35 out of their first 40. And what did Atlanta win a few years ago? 13? Yeah, 13. That's the record. That was when that was in 1982. Two and two to Dave Concepcion. Dwight Gooden has allowed three hits, striking out six Reds in the process. K corner, cuckoo corner. Right <laughs> <laughs> there. Fastball got him looking. And I say looking because he didn't have a swing. He had a swing like he was taking. He was indecisive. And it looked like he had his eyes closed on top of that. He was way late. Looked as though Davey was looking for a breaking ball. If you anticipate a breaking ball from Gooden, you better be right, because that heater gets up there in a hurry even when you're looking for it. Here's Oster. Seven strikeout for Dwight Gooden. Ron Oster looking for his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 14. Fastball misses 2-0 to Oster. Ron, a Cincinnati product, went to Woodrow Wilson High School there. There are three Cincinnati products in the starting lineup for the Reds today, Rose, Parker, and Oster. There's a strike. Grounded toward first, Hernandez. Two out. One of the things you do not see too often, and I think it's interesting, is that Dwight Gooden does not jam a lot of hitters. Because hitters are so conscious of getting that bat head out. A lot of guys are, have a tendency to hit it off the end of the bat. But uh, if, they, if they do foul it back, it's usually off the good part of the bat. It's no problem getting the good part of the bat on the ball. It's just centering it. And Bellardello centers one, but Strawberry is there. And for only the second time in the ball game, the Reds go down in order. And after six and a half innings of play here at Shea, the Mets lead two to nothing. Now here's a word from Old Spice. <laughs> Fans, the Mets have a brand new fan club. I wonder if that's the president right there. And the good news is that the club is open to fans of all ages. For just $4, you can become a member of the Mets Super Fan Club and receive a Super Fan Kit, which includes a full-size Catch the Rising Stars pennant, a bumper sticker, and fan club button, and a special edition eight-player baseball card set, which is only available to fan club members. Membership is limited, so join now. Send a check or money order for $4 payable to the New York Mets. To Mets Super Fan Club, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. It's your chance to become an official member of the Mets family, a special club for the greatest fans in the world. That's a check or money order for $4 to Mets Super Fan Club, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Do yourself a favor and join now. This fine young ball club, Wally Backman leading off the seventh inning. Fastball is outside. Backman walked his last time up, grounded into a double play. As Tom Hume, the right-hander, up and throwing for the Reds. There's a strike. You've got to be impressed with the way Tibbs moves the ball from one side of the plate to the other. Yeah, in and out, in and out. That's a very successful way to pitch for most people if you have the control to do it. And he's shown that today. Breaking ball line to right field. It's going to be at least two. Make that three. And Wally Backman has the first triple of the year for the Mets.
problems when you have that outfield shifted way around the left field and you throw the breaking ball. This is what happens. We've seen that a lot already this year where defenses have been set up for Backman to go the other way and they've thrown breaking balls to him, allowing him to pull the ball. Well, I'll tell you, next to the home run, this is the most exciting play in baseball, the triple, especially for Mets fans when it leads off an inning. And with Backman's great speed, he ought to get more than just this one this season. Mookie Wilson, the batter, he is one for three, infield in. Ball hit well to right field. Is it fair? Yes! Backman scores, and it's a ground rule double for Mookie Wilson, his second double of the ball game, and a break for the Reds because had that ball stayed fair, Wilson certainly would have had a triple. Three nothing Mets. You talk about giving the fans something to cheer about. Top of the order coming up here in the seventh, and they're jumping all over Jay Tibbs all of a sudden. Backman walks home, and Mookie, as you see, would have been in third easily. The ball just went right by Dave Parker and by the edge of the outfield wall. And that's going to be all for Jay Tibbs. Shut out the Mets through five innings, and then Gary Carter once more, a home run, his third of the season. Darrell Strawberry scored after a throwing error by catcher Dan Villardello. Uh, Darrell scoring on a single by Ryan Gardenhire. And now in the seventh, the explosive offense of the Mets continues to rampage through the Reds. Backman leads off with a triple, and Mookie Wilson follows with an RBI double. So Jay Tibbs in his second start of the year. Also, the second time he has faced Dwight Gooden is out of there, and the pitcher, Joe Price. Well, Jay Tibbs goes six-plus innings. He faces two batters here in the seventh inning. He is charged so far with three runs on eight hits. He struck out two and walked four. He is responsible, of course, for Mookie Wilson, the runner at second base. corner to around the world. The Channel 9 news team keeps you in touch. Join Tom Dunn and Sarah Lee Kessler for the top stories. Jimmy Myers for in-depth sports coverage. And that irresponsible, uh, make that irrepressible, <laughs> <laughs> weatherman, weatherman Lloyd Lindsay Young. You can join all the gang for the forecast weeknights at 8 on News 9 Prime Time. I love it. <laughs> right here on Channel 9. Our pal Lloyd Lindsay Young, he didn't give us a pretty day today. Oh, no, well, that, then he deserves that rip. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it was a Freudian. So. <laughs> Joe Price making his first appearance of the 1985 season. Price last year was 7-13 and 13 with Cincinnati. An ERA of 4.19. He made 30 appearances. Struck out 129 at batters in 171 and two-thirds innings. You mentioned the, the thrill of watching a triple, and I agree with that so much, maybe even more than a home run to some degree, depending what, on when it happens. What is the book that came out in the early 70s? Was it the Great American Novel? Yes. That, uh, that describes a triple, and Stan Isaacs, who is a television and radio critic for the Newsday, for the Newsday newspaper, sent me an excerpt last year from the Great American Novel. And uh, it is just a marvelous uh, excerpt describing a triple. When a uh, gal asks the hero, the heroine and the hero are talking, and the heroine asked the guy if he loved her, and, and he had to think a bit, and he said, more than a triple? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great book that is, too. So here's Keith Hernandez. Mookie Wilson at second, nobody out. Grounded toward first, Pete Rose makes the play, but in the process, Wilson moves to third, and still only one out, and the batter, Gary Carter, and I don't think the Reds will be pitching to Carter. Hernandez does the job by moving Wilson to third base. The Mets are doing a lot of good things these first five ball games. 
Well, when you consider the 219 team batting average coming into the ball game, add that to the fact that's balanced out, really, by the fact that they came in leading the National League in team ERA of 1.38. That's going to go down if the things stay the way they are. They put a lot of little things together for these wins. Going to pitch to Carter and a slider to Gary as a strike. Infield drawn in. Maybe Pete Rose defying the percentages here because Darrell Strawberry homered off John Franco, a left-hander, in yesterday's ball game. Wilson at third, one out. Those things tend to stay with you. Indeed. Jams in with a fastball. Eddie Milner coming strong. Wilson's going to try it. Four nothing Mets. The appeal play at third. No, says Randy March, and the Mets are up four to nothing. Good play, Mookie Wilson. One of the shortest sacrifice flies in the history of baseball, right here, only because of Mookie Wilson's speed, and also the fact that Milner was running full speed and had to gather himself before he could make a throw. And you don't think Mookie doesn't know that? He's a center fielder too. This is another RBI for Carter. He now has four, two on the day. And the Mets with a four-run lead. Here is Daryl Strawberry. Fastball is a strike from Joe Price. Here it is again. See how many steps Milner had to take before he could get himself in a position to even throw. It's a good throw, but there's no way it's going to be in time. Slider is strike two. 0 oh and 2 to Daryl Strawberry. Might add, Mr. Zabriski, that was a perfect analysis Thank you very of much. that play. Swing and a miss, he got him with the slider. So Strawberry goes down on strikes. First strikeout for Joe Strut, for Joe Price. But the Mets score two more runs on two hits. And they strand none. And after seven, lead the Reds four to nothing. Now here's a word from Nissan. Well, the remarkable tones of Glenn Miller's in the mood. The Mets have certainly put their fans in the mood here at Shea Stadium. 4-0 entering this game, and they're leading 4-0 over the Reds. Another brilliant performance by Dwight Gooden. He has struck out seven through seven, allowing only three hits. The Reds are going to set up a pinch hitter. It's going to be Dwayne Walker. Check that. It's going to be Tom Foley. Number 10, Tom Foley. Tom Foley at one time during last year was the starting shortstop for the Reds over 50 games, moving Davey Concepcion to third base. This is Foley's first official at bat for 1985. And it looks like Tom Hume will be the next Cincinnati pitcher. And a good job by Joe Price preventing further damage. Jay Tibbs giving up all four runs through six innings of work. Price working the seventh inning. Fastball to Foley is high, and he may be taking until Gooden throws him a strike. Top of the eighth inning, 4 nothing New York. So much for taking until he throws you a strike. One and one to Foley. You know, I think a lot of hitters probably would rather not take a strike against Gooden because he's a tough guy to get behind. Yeah, but you're four runs down, and that is a, a vanishing way to play the game. He took that one to make it strike two, so Tom is working backwards. <laughs> well, the theory, of course, is to give the pitcher a chance to get himself in trouble. Sure. Or get, get ahead in the count as a hitter. Yeah, technically, your run is no good. I mean, that if he hits one nine miles, it's still four to one, so you need base runners, and the Reds will have to wait until one out. Eight strikeout for Dwight Gooden. Well, this crowd came out to cheer. Dwight put the K's up on K-Day. And there is, as you see, a plethora of those cards passed out. Compliments of Kodak and the Mets. The other side has Dwight's picture on it. Quite appropriate. Eddie Milner the batter. He's 0 for 3. Fastball misses. One and oh to Ed Milner from Columbus, Ohio. In the area of Cincinnati, about 100 miles away. Two and oh to Milner. 
Eddie, the cousin of former Met John Milner. The hammer. There's a strike, two and one. Fouls it back. So it's two and two to Ed Milner. The White Gooden has retired 14 of the last 16 batters. Breaking ball is low. Three and two to Milner. He'll go at him with gas right now. Milner fouls it back. Might have been ball four, but that ball up in your eyes is so enticing, isn't it? It looks bigger than it really is, and with the light pitching, you need all the help you can to make that ball look bigger. of his first double-digit game as the K corner goes nuts. Boy, this is right there at the knees, right down the middle of the plate. See you later as Billy Williams punches him out. I tell you, that was above the knees, not at the knees. Dwight Gooden went into double digits 15 times last year, breaking Tom Seeger, Seaver's record of 13 or more games in 1973 when he struck out Ten or more. And if there's one guy that does not want to be the tenth, it's this guy right here. Pete has struck out once. He is single. He was the first for Gooden today. Mm -hmm. Fouls it back. 0-2. Oh You're not going to strike him out with a heater. I don't think. Even though he has waved through one fastball today. Fans on their feet. Two. K -k -k K's a plenty here at Shea, huh? <laughs> 30,000 umpires, too. Those K's in the background are not for K -k -k Katie. <laughs> Fastball is high, two and two to Rose. Pete Rose, 24 years older than that young man on the screen right there. More than twice as old. Breaking ball, check swing to Gardenhire. Three up, three down for Gooden. He's now retired eight in a row. Seems as though he's getting stronger as the game progresses. After seven and a half innings of play here at Shea Stadium, the Mets four and the Reds nothing. Now a word from manufacturers Hanover. The new pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds, Tom Hume, who was 3-12 last year, off of knee surgery, and his first start of the year, or make that his first appearance, make that his second appearance. If I can't get it right, here's somebody who can, Steve-O. <laughs> just forget what I just said. Take it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Bench bullpen busy, Jesse Orozco and Doug Sisk. The two you might expect to see out there at this time of the game. George Foster will lead it off against Tom Hume, who in fact is making his second appearance of the year. Has no record nor saves, however. And an ERA of 4.50. And he is the third pitcher for Cincinnati today. Foster, one for three. Singled back in the second inning. Looks at a ball low, and Hume does the splits. George has had a good series, as you see, three for nine. And Phil Ardello's going to go out and be sure he's all right because he did really slip and do a complete split. Baseball quiz. What does Tom Hume and Elvis Presley have in common? Well, let's see. 
Both born in Tupelo, Mississippi? No. No, no Hume's not from Tupelo. Here's his slip. This has nothing to do with Elvis Presley, by the way. <laughs> well, then how can they have it in common? <laughs> Elvis Presley attended Hume's High School in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. But unfortunately, it wasn't named for Tom or any of his family. We don't know that that is a fact. No, no. <laughs> we can't prove that, no. Actually, they have very little to do with each other. <laughs> Ground ball foul outside of third, and the count holds it one and two. George single to center in the second, struck out in the fourth, and popped to short in the sixth. Hume's High School. Uh-huh. How far is that from Christian Brothers in Memphis where you went to high school? Uh, across town. About eight miles. And it gets him with a nice pitch down and away. First strikeout for Hume, one out here in the eighth. This is indeed a good fastball. See Pillar Dello setting up inside, and Hume elects to go outside. Perfect communication. <laughs> well, it worked. Mets leading four to nothing, bottom of the eighth, one out. And here's Howard Johnson, who is 0 for 3. Johnson reached on a fielder's choice, flied out to center, and popped out in foul territory to Pete Rose. Fouled off the other way out of play. One and one. Tom yeah. Hume, a graduate of Northeast High School in St. Petersburg, Florida, was voted the top high school baseball player in the country back in 1971. Number one draft choice for the Reds. Not a bad golfer, I understand. Just outside. Two and one. And now three and one. First walk issued by Hume and the fifth walk in the ball game by Cincinnati pitching as Tibbs had walked four. So with one out, Johnson the base runner for Ron Gardenhire who had a big RBI single in the sixth inning that gave the Mets a two to nothing lead at that point. And that was Gardy's first hit of the year. Always feels good to get that first one under your belt. Especially when you don't play every day. Strike call. Breaking ball on a beauty, 0-2. The Mets with four runs on eight hits, no errors. The Reds have no runs, three hits, and one error. Another beautiful curveball, and Gardenhire is out of there looking. Strikeout number two for Hume. Good breaking ball from Tom Hume. He's not noted for his breaking ball, but a good one right there. And Dwight Good is going to be allowed to hit for himself. By the way, Steve, National League scoreboard at Chicago, Wrigley Field, Montreal has failed to score in the bottom of the first, a rain-delayed game. And as everybody knows, it can't be delayed too long at Wrigley Field. St. Louis over Pittsburgh, vying for their first one of the year, 4-1 to one at the top of the eighth. San Francisco at L.A. later. San Diego losing to Atlanta 3-1, to one, top of the eighth. And Philadelphia at Houston, no score in the third. Good with a big cut. And a count one and one. Dwight's one for three. Had a base hit on a bunt. A beautiful actual sacrifice attempt back in the second inning that he beat out for a bunt base hit. Runner going, swing and a miss. A strike two. And Johnson's in there. Howard Johnson picks up his first stolen base of the year. The Mets have now been successful 10 of 11 attempts here in 85. Now, normally you would not run with two out and the pitcher hitting, but since this is the eighth inning, and the only way that the ninth hitter is going to bat is probably 
by the pinch hit route in the ninth inning. Should Cincinnati tie it or go ahead in the ninth, it is a good play to run in this situation. And there's a ground ball in the hole cut off by Krenchicki, who makes the throw to Rose, and the inning is over. So a walk and a stolen base and one left in the eighth inning here for New York. We will go to the ninth as the Mets try to win five in a row to open the 85 season. It would be their best start ever. They lead four to nothing, and we're back at Shea after this word from the good old skies. Dwight Gooden going for his first victory of the season, his first complete game, of course, and the, the doctor is in and has been for nine innings now as we go to the ninth. Dave Parker will lead it off. Cesar Cedeno and Wayne Krenchicki scheduled to follow. Four to nothing, New York. Parker, one for two, as you see, had a single on a stolen base back in the first inning. Since then, he's grounded into a fielder's choice and walked. And he takes the ball inside. Gooden has struck out nine through the first eight innings. Walked only two and has allowed only three hits. Fouled away, one and one. That's how Dwight gets ahead of a lot of hitters. Can't catch up to that fastball, and they foul it back. Seems like with two strikes, he can reach back for that little bit extra, and all great pitchers are like that. Same thing with a man on third and less than two out. Bear down. Well, so if you have something to bear down with. And he's got the stuff. Two and one. The right stuff. It's a good name for a movie. <laughs> His eyes are anything but spacey. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'll say. <laughs> right through. Parker swung right through that fastball, and it's two and two. And again with two strikes, the K cards come out, and the fans get up. <laughs> Somebody hung a K over the ball. <laughs> the indicator on the scoreboard. Popped up into short center field. Mookie Wilson drifting over toward left a little bit and in. One away in the ninth. We mentioned the National League, American League scoreboard. The White Sox came up with seven runs in the top of the sixth to slow down the Red Sox. They lead nine to five after five, or after five and a half. Detroit over Kansas City, two to nothing in the fifth inning. Detroit still undefeated. Toronto over Baltimore, three to two in the seventh. And Cleveland over New York, 1-0. Bottom of the eighth inning. Cesar Cedeno has popped out in foul territory to Howard Johnson, struck out looking, and flied out deep to left. And he lays off the high heater for ball one. Gooden two outs away from his first victory and first complete game. It would give the Mets five wins in a row. Popped up and out of play. One and one. Dwight has now retired nine in a row. Two balls, one strike. And we might add, Steve, that Ralph Kiner will have a complete scoreboard wrap-up, as always, on Kiner Cor Kiner's Corner. Post-game guest. That'll be out of play down the right field line, and the count now even at two and two. Not only has Dwight retired nine in a row, he has retired 17 of the last 19 hitters. Only a base hit back in the fifth inning by Bill Ardello and a walk in the sixth inning to Parker. And that goes all the way back to the third inning. Ground ball, Gooden flags it down, two away. Now he's retired 18 of the last 20 to face him. 10 in a row. He showed last year that he is a strong finisher. Here's Wayne Krenchicki, 0 for 2. Walked, line back to Gooden, and fly deep to center. And as often the case, uh, Cedeno's ground ball back to Gooden, only the fourth ground ball out in this ball game. Dwight will get you to hit it in the air, or he'll strike you out. That's how he records most of his outs. Not a lot of ground balls hit off Gooden. Hard to get on top of that rider. Uh-huh. There's one foul back. 0-1. In order to get double-digit strikeout figures, Gooden would have to strike out Krenchicki, or Krenchicki would have to 
get on base, and Goodwin have to strike out someone else. Breaking ball, but too high, says Billy Williams, one and one. Fastball fouled away. One ball, two strikes. Now the crowd will get excited even more, looking for that not only game ending out, but they want that game ending strikeout. A blooper into left center field. It'll be a base hit. Mookie Wilson over bobbles it, but Krenchicki will not advance. So the fourth hit off Gooden comes with two out here in the ninth inning. And again, it was not a ball. It was hit hard. So David Concepcion, who has struck out twice already, in addition to flying out to center field, will be the hitter. Very, very difficult not to get caught up with the crowd here and waving all the K's and everything and the reference, of course, to Dr. K. But Gooden is so mature and realizes that he wants an out. He doesn't care whether it's a strikeout or not. By his own admittance, he's not trying for strikeouts. Got a little help from Concepcion on that one. Strike one. Now, he knows where it's at, to use improper grammar. It's in the W column. Just a little high, one and one. You know, you look at him and his expressions. He looks exactly the same way in the ninth as he did in the first. In command. Right down the middle, strike two. And the crowd's up again. Four to nothing Mets, two outs, ninth inning. A runner at first base and a one ball, two strike count on Dave Concepcion. Two and two. Too high, and now a full count. Carter reminding Gooden that Krenchicki will be running from first base with two out on a full count. What do you think? Fastball here, come right out. Definitely. You're after the outs. You're not after any strikeout necessarily. Naturally, you'll take it, but you got to defuse the. Axton on strikeouts only here. What he's going to get, too. Runner goes. Strike three call. Ten strikeouts for Gooden, but most importantly, another New York Met victory. The Mets have won their first five ball games of 1985. Dwight Gooden is now 1-0. Temporarily leads the National League in strikeouts with a total of 16. Gary Carter with another big home run. The difference in the ball game as the Mets win it 4 to nothing. And let's look at Dwight's reaction after striking out Concepcion to win it. 3-2 fastball on the outside corner. Very calm. All right, Gary Carter catching Gooden. All right. <laughs> Firing the ball. All right. Gary Carter is going to be a big help to the Mets pitching staff. He's already been a big help with his bat <laughs> as he's won a couple of ball games. And his home run to give the Mets a one to nothing lead, the difference in this ball game. Dwight Gooden, the winner, he is 1-0 and on the year. Jay Tibbs, the starter and loser for Cincinnati, is 0-2 now. Gooden's first complete game, he strikes out 10 to get his first victory of 85 as the Mets win it 4 to nothing. Tim and I will be back to wrap it up, so stay with us. Of course, Ralph will follow momentarily with Kiner's Corner. The Mets are 5-0 in first place in the National League East, the only unbeaten team in the National League. Now, here's a word from Garcia Vega.